we're going to read from Luke chapter 10 verse 25 through to verse 37 and we're going to begin reading there let's read together and behold a certain lawyer stood up and tipping him saying master what shall I do to inherit eternal life and he said unto him what is written in the law how readest thou and he answered and said thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself and he said unto him thou hast answered right this do and and thou shall live read but he willing to justify himself saying to unto jesus. him jesus and who is my neighbor and jesus answering said a certain man went down from jerusalem to jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his remnant and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead and by chance there came down to a certain priest that way and when he saw him he passed by on the other side and likewise a levite when he was at the place came and looked on him and passed by on the other side but a certain samaritan as he sojourned came where he was and when he saw him he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him and on the morrow when he departed he took out two peas and gave to the host and said to him take care of and whatsoever thou spendest when I come again I will repay which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves and, and he, he said, said he, he that, that showed, mercy. showed mercy on him then said Jesus unto him go, go and, and do, do thou likewise let the church say amen, amen. you may be seated I am dealing with flawed people and I'm letting you know in this particular verse of scripture that there was a certain man who fell among thieves and robbers and they beat him and you look and see and they left him for half dead. Now this is quite interesting. They left him for what? Half dead. And it got so bad that when they left him there they begin to say, wow, he must be drunk. Somebody else begin to say, look, something is wrong. The priest came by, Samaritan came by, but both of them passed him on the other side. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, on the other side. A lot of church folk are the most critical people in the world. They'll talk about you, make jokes of you, and laugh at you. Please don't have no downtime. They'll remember your sin as though it happened yesterday. And they'll bring it up time and time again because that's Bible to them. And that's not Bible to God. Because the Bible teaches us if we judge somebody, we're going to be judged. Y'all remember, is that book of Matthew chapter 7? Y'all ever read that? It says, judge not yet, ye may not be judged. For the same measure ye meet, it shall be what? It's going to happen to you again and some more. Amen? Now we're going to get even more powerful with this scripture. I want y'all to hear and understand and know this is a dangerous thing for most church folk because they don't quite understand. If you get religious and fall prey to something that you shouldn't fall prey to, please, we know the Bible says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another, but today you can't confess your faults to anybody. It reminds me of these three men that went out in the boat together and they rowed out into the middle of the little lake and all of them began to confess their sins. One told the other one, said, man, 
you know, I got a problem. I got a problem, man, with, I got a lust problem. I can't keep my eyes off them women. I know I got a wife, but I got a bad problem. Other one said, man, I got a drinking and a gambling problem. The other one jumped out the boat and started swimming. He said, where you going? He said, I got a gossiping problem. I got to go tell everybody <laughs> what your problem is. <laughs> you got people that'll tell all your business as though it was yours. Excuse me, as though it was theirs. And they'll run all over the place trying to find out because, see, they feel good and justified because, see, that ain't me. They, they just no good, dirty, low-down, stinking dog. And, and I'm saying, well, wait a minute, what's wrong with you? Black shoes don't tell no lie. The heart, above all things, is deceitfully wicked. It says, who can know it? And so now here we are dealing with church folk. And church folk are the same people that crucified Christ and lied on him at the same time. Church folk will kill you quick, fast, and hurry. Now, I thought the media was bad. The media will have you convicted before the ju jury goes out. It's a shame the jury got to go home and hear the media. They're already guilty of the media, but everybody don't know the facts. And sometimes they sequester the courtroom and they don't let all the facts come in. It's a whole lot of innocent people sitting up in jail. I got a boy in jail right now, Tanya's son. He was doing the best he can. He was making all his probation officers and everything. And this lady lied on him and said he was over there shooting up a house and they put him in jail for over five years. He's in there now. The lady came to her senses because she found out she had cancer and she wanted to do a deathbed confession. <laughs> that she lied on this boy. The court say, forget that, we got him now. There's a man that you just read about in the newspaper, spent 26 years of his life in jail. They owe him a million dollars for each year that he was in jail, plus more. It's over 100 million, but because the city is broke, they're trying to close it out of court. But he spent 26 of his life in jail. All because somebody lied and the cops said, go on and put him in jail. You know you got him. He raped that woman. And they found out he didn't do no such thing. Do you realize how many innocent people is incarcerated in jail right now? Because somebody told a lie. But all I got to say to that, I want you to tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, Jesus paid it all. Now, come on and give him praise. Because some of us in here were in prison. Before you came through them doors, you was locked up in something. Whether you was behind bars or not, you was locked up in a situation that caused you to be flawed. Now, I've had my record sponged twice. Twice. What you do, Pastor? See? See, you already waiting on me to tell you what I did. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I <laughs> but guess what you can't find it <laughs> I'm not guilty I had to plead guilty so that I couldn't get in no trouble that's Cheryl look at Cheryl hallelujah that's Cheryl that baby that's Cheryl don't you give her that cell phone, that's Cheryl. <laughs> she in her right mind too, Cheryl looking good, doing good, God bless her. Well, y'all got me happy now, I might preach a little bit. Well, I'm glad she made it out that fire, look at Cheryl. All right, this is a family reunion. All right, well, let's go on a little farther here, let me get my thoughts back. So now, as you can see, people have been put in a situation and yet the only one could get you out was God. That's what I was going through with the baby's mama. Brought the baby home. They said I jumped on her and I wouldn't get the baby back. And they took me to court. I didn't jump on nobody. The police came to arrest me at the house. And I was already gone. I had to go to the police department, turn myself in. 
They say, oh, Pastor Tate, what did you do? I said, shut up. <laughs> I knew the police department. I said, just shut up. I ain't do nothing. <laughs> so right over here off of Grand River. So they turned around and let me go. I was, I was fine. I got loose. Amen. <laughs> but I went to court and guess what? I had to plead guilty because I didn't plead guilty. They're going to give me a case. They say, and my judge whispered, say, tell him, tell him, please kill him in one year. I'll sponge his record. I said, cool. But in sponging my record, I had to go see a psychologist. And I had to sit in a class for anger management. You wasn't listening. I told you what I did. <laughs> all right all right I came out of that Amen. a few years later Kendra got grown and she acting up and I'm she, she, you don't know, make if I just serve her I said get in this car popped her get in this car she called her mama detective out in Oakland County put a rest out for me I stopped at a light going to McCall's house and the lady the cop came on and said, we putting you in jail. You got a warrant for your arrest. I ain't know nothing about that. And she told all the resting off, take him way out in the backside where they can't find him. Cops told said, we can't do that no more. Our boss told us, no, we ain't taking him out there no more. We can't do that. When in there, the cops were so nice, Joan and Larry came and got me out of jail. <laughs> You better let my pastor go to you. <laughs> this was so funny. But that cost me $17,000. My record was sponge. I went to one psychologist. She was a racist. And she, she tried to talk to me, and I was counseling her. You know, a preacher will read the riot act on you. I started reading her, and she said, ah, ah. Oh, okay. That demon came out, I had to go see another psychologist. <laughs> After that, I had to see a psychiatrist and a psychologist. <laughs> Trying to break me. So after I came out of that, the Lord delivered me. Now I want y'all to hear how they can lie on you in a court of law, and it can cost you some money. I had to take Kendra to psychiatry meetings and the pay that was $275 every time she sat down and $275 every time I sat down. This went on for a year. That's how it cost me $17,000. My daughter learned real quick, ain't nothing wrong with you, but one thing for sure, you see what you just cost me, baby? And you want a car. This happened for real, but I learned something, how to keep my mouth shut. And I also learned how to keep my temper together. You come up on me real quick and I'll look at you. I got the lesson. I went to school with hard knocks. You pull me over now, I say, yes, sir. Yes, sir, officer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, officer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, officer. Yes, sir. I'm your chaplain. I'm about to become a Detroit police officer chaplain. Now, why are you doing this? Because I want to get right up under these cops that are so stressed out, lying on people and throwing them in jail. I'm trying to get them calmed down so they can have a, sense, a peace of mind without hurting nobody and not hurting me. We have, we are ministers. We go to minister. How many of y'all know what Romans chapter 13 say? How many of y'all know what Romans chapter 13 say? How many of y'all know what Romans chapter 13 say? Let every soul, let every be, soul be subject unto the higher power. Subject powers. to the higher power. For there is no power but of God. For there is no power but of God. 
the powers that be the powers that be are ordained are ordained of, of God. God. Uh huh. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, whosoever therefore resists the power, resisteth the resist ordinance the of ordinance God. Of God. And they that resist, and shall, they that resist shall receive to themselves, shall receive to themselves damnation. damnation. Therefore, if a police come up and he say, "Halt! You stand still." Amen. Amen. Because he can't say something he's not supposed to say because it could get you in deep trouble. So it's always good to obey the laws of the land. Yes. Yes. Are y'all still here? Amen. Are y'all getting something out of this? Yes. Okay, now that I understand what's going on, I begin to make my demand on how I'm going to stand up for the kingdom of God. Now straightway is going to come the devil to attack you especially in the things that you do for the glory of God. The enemy's job is to kill, steal, and look at your neighbor and say, destroy. The biggest danger is how people are being destroyed. They don't have a full knowledge on what they're supposed to do when they're up against the wall. So therefore, I begin to look at people and say, my God, all these rich folk get into all this trouble over nothing. Don't have to get in trouble. Uh, here's Bill Causey. Now he's charged of rape. 30 something years ago. 30 something years ago, this girl looked young enough to be his daughter. Or she had to be a baby because Bill Cosby got to be about 70 or 80 years old. 74. So, however it may be, he got money. And because he got money, you got mail. What are you saying? They want the money. He's a billionaire. And when you see a billionaire, everybody is barking at the bit for the tree. Go on and settle out of court. Michael Jackson had to settle over nine, ten cases. But when he died and before he died, the kids, come on, say, we lied on him because we wanted his money. He could not be around people. It's scaring me to be around some church folk. There's something wrong with you if you save, you're straight, and you save, you, 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 you show you ain't gay. You show something ain't wrong with you. You got to have a woman, you got to do something. You show something wrong. See, they're trying to test the waters. But the whole thing is you got to do what God called you to do. Amen. When God says sanctify yourself, you got to separate yourself from a whole lot of things and situations and people and circumstances. You got to live for God. Somebody say it's time to live for God. Now the moment you start living for God, there comes tests, there comes trials, and there come tribulations. There's all kind of things that you're going to face because you flaw. Yes, I'm flawed. I've been flawed. So what? Who ain't? The greatest preacher in this city is messed up. It's obvious that when you see them, you look like they got it together because they live in a nice house. They drive a big car. They got a lot of money. So what? That don't mean that's them because a man's life don't consist in the things that he have. If you're going to be what Christ called you to be, you're going to be challenged. Ah, but it's a lot of dysfunction going on in their life. Well, it's a lot of dysfunction going on in everybody's life. Oh, I done met some sipping saints. They used to drink a whole lot of hot toddies. I done met all kind of saints that actually do things that's so wild until you would think we all crazy. I done it. But as I grew out of it, I learned how to stand on the word of God and it took time for me to get to this place it didn't happen overnight it just didn't happen overnight it was some things that challenged me so until I had to make up my mind I'm gonna stand and it gets difficult at times don't think that every every road is gonna be just smooth sailing you got some rocks in those roads Just like when that man was found beaten and left for dead. The first one came by was a church person. 
the man of God. Now, he probably was reading the news, Harold. You know, if you stop and pick him up, you know, these guys ain't really laying down. They jump up and beat you up. But he stopped and said, uh-uh, I'm going on the other side. Here come the priest's helper. He looked. People start avoiding you like you're the plague. But there's a plague inside of them that's eating them alive. A little white lie they told on somebody and got them a jail term. How they lied on their taxes from the IRS. All liars gonna have their part in the lake anyway. So now people are beginning to make excuses for their sin. And the Bible said in the book of Romans there shall be no excuse. So we went down to the potter's house. We saw how that clay was marred in the potter's hand. And he made it again another vessel. The reason why he had to make it over because what, it, what he was going through, it couldn't fit in the potter's hand. That stuff had to come out. And somebody looked at your neighbor and said, it's got to come out. And when it starts coming out, people want to blame other people the reasons why they're going through what they're going through, so it had to be their fault. Psychology say that. They deal with them like in the psychology stance. When people start blaming other people, there's something wrong with them. So if you put the finger that way, there's so many pointing back at you. So now we can see how people are caught up in people. The he say and the she say. I found out that you can't put everybody around you. I found out you can't tell everybody everything. I found out you had to be slow to speak and swift to hear. I found out to just wait, I say, on the Lord and be of good cheer because the Lord is going to deliver you. He's going to bring you out. But the devil is trying to take you in. And that's why we got people messed up, self-pity. And people have a spirit of guilt and condemnation on themselves but in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1 if you know anything about your Bible in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1 I'm off the porch I'm not on the page you got to help me with this here in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1 what do it say no. now therefore there is no what to them that are what who walk not after the what after the flesh but after what after the spirit when you start walking in the spirit your past will have a tendency to come up but even though your past come up don't think your past is gonna hold you captive when God comes along he'll put a stamp and a seal on it and says you do you know son old things are passed away and all things have become new you become a new creature in Christ Jesus now I know you understand what I'm trying to tell you because everybody you see got a past and they have a tendency to know more about your past but they forgot so soon where they past was at my God when I see people hanging out in people's past I say well, what happened to you Tell me about you was hanging out with that. You a woman, you was hanging out with that woman. What was your problem? Why were you so attracted to men in your day? I saw you on Facebook. You was dressing up like a, you know. Then you closed me out of your page. You wouldn't let me back up in there. Now what is the problem? You didn't want me to see the, the hanky with the panky on there, did you? You didn't want me to see that little skirt you had on as a cross-dresser. You didn't want me to see none of that, did you? Why? You was afraid I was going to judge you? Are y'all getting something out of this? Look at you, they say, everybody's flawed. People are messed up in their brains. And they come to you and ask you to unscramble them like you're going to break an egg open. So here we are in the house of God, trying to, can't we all just get along? Because we're having difficulties looking at other people. Look, I ain't got time to look at nobody else. I 
don't want to see no more mess. I just want to get mine straight now. I got to see Jesus. So when I come in the house of God, I didn't come here for you. I came to see, is there any word from the Lord? Is, is the bomb coming from Gilead? Where is Jesus? I need him in my life. God, don't you see I've been tore up from the floor, up, messed up from the head down to the fingernails, toes. God, you got to do something in my life. I'm still fighting with my ancestral curses generational curses from my daddy how crazy he was and then i'm fighting with my own generational curse that i've created and i got to worry about my children something being passed over to them Jesus. oh y'all ain't got quiet now Jesus. what'd you say work your tax <laughs> so now you can see when you look at one person you can't look too far because you can just sit right where you are. Police pulled you over. You were speeding. I wasn't going that fast. You looked down when he stopped you. You was going 50 in the 35 mile an hour zone. But now you're trying to talk your way out the ticket. I tell him, yeah, I was speeding. I was on the freeway down in Southfield one day. I was running down there. I mean, I was hitting uh, 75, 80. Car got up behind me. I said, what? get off me. I'm fussing, right? I pull over, police pull right over behind me. Get over. I said, oh, God. Why didn't you get them? They were right behind me. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> See, we know who you are. Go. <laughs> I have been so blessed down through the years. Because y'all ever roll with me. If you ever roll with me, John. <laughs> you should have seen me when I had my Magnum. All I felt was that hemming. I needed prayer. Every time I got behind the wheel, I was speeding. I just hear a hush. But you know, God was so good to me, and I was fortunate. I didn't get no car accident. I didn't hurt nobody. And then some days I pray in spirit, and he'll slow me down. The police come flying right by me. It must be angels in that car. I see the cop on the side. No, I speak. I said, you better not turn around. <laughs> now they're looking for seat belts more than anything. I had to make sure I got my belt on. So, saints, we all flawed. Don't let nobody tell you you ain't got no problems. You look like you got a problem. <laughs> if I had to look at you in your face and you start talking, your breath go to stink, and I know you got a problem. <laughs> Mine was doing the same thing before I got them teeth out. And start soaking them every night so I can get all that stuff in between them out. <laughs> Mama God had to save me from me. I believe he really had to save me from me. Because the biggest problem that you can have is with you. Have you ever looked in the mirror and laughed at yourself? I cracked up one day just falling out about me. My hair turned real gray, got a little bald spot, I was going good. Everybody said, keep the gray. I said, I don't want no gray. Once you go black, you can't go back. I don't want to be gray. And so I started wrestling with my hair. Tanya got me into that because every time I looked at her down in Florida, her hair started growing. I came back, her hair growing. I said, what you doing? I'm taking these pills. Give me some. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a living witness. And boy, it works. But what makes it work more than anything <laughs> 
is my faith. I don't have to stay where I'm at no more. I don't have to be put in people's little boxes and judged by what folks say. I could care less what people say. People are so caught up in people worrying about what do you think? What do you, I ain't worried about what you think no more. I grew out of that. When you grow up and you start maturing in the faith, the knowledge of God comes on you and you increase. And you don't worry about people because if anybody spend more time worrying about you, they just wasted a portion of their life. Don't let nobody pull you down so low and you're doing a solo all the time because of what they say. Naysayers. When you're in the spirit of God, know that, hey, for all have sinned of the glory of God. Somebody going to need your help. But don't pass by on the other side. When Kwame Cleopatra was getting ready to go to jail, I saw him on the porch. I wanted to stop so bad and say, Kwame, God going to bless you, man. You going to come out of this? Because he was so all alone, used to having his entourage and all the people around him. And everybody, Kwame did this. Kwame ain't did all this stuff you see he doing. I seen somebody just recently do it, and they patted him on the back. Didn't do nothing to him. They had been doing that for years, but the whole thing was they had to get a patsy so that they can actually put the bankruptcy on somebody else. God want to help. I, I pray for him. I say, God bless Carmi Kilpatrick. Because I want him to come out. 15 years from now, however long. I know they want to keep giving them case after case. Let me tell you something. Our president got more trouble than he can shake a stick at. Everything he do is wrong. Everything he say is wrong. Now the Republicans got the house. He said, I'm going to use my veto power. I'm going over your head. And that's what you got to do. Use your veto power and go over and come out of a situation of what people are saying about you. When they see me, they, go, they can't stand me. Good. Church folk. I still know how to get around you. I'm 62 and I still know what to do. <laughs> that right, Carl. <laughs> My next message, 62, know what to do. I preach it on my birthday, 63. Okay, so now you got people that don't care for you. Love them. Because they're going to need you one day. They might bleed you for all you got right now, but love them anyway. All the talk they did, just love them and, and do this. Thank them for taking you to the next level. Come on and shout hallelujah. Yes, I thank you. Ah, I would have listened to you. So the one that went over and bound him up was the one that put him in the inn and paid two pence and said, if I owe you any more, I'll pay you when I come again. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that despitefully use you. Those that say all manner of evil against you falsely. Do good to them. Look for an opportunity to bless them. Make sure you just come, I'm blessing you. You're blessing me? Yes, I'm blessing you. Because God is going to give you the greatest breakthrough when you do the opposite of what they think. Come on, say amen, somebody. Ezekiel chapter 16, I'm coming home. Uh, Y'all got to help me a little bit because I know I'm running off at the jibs. Just pray for me. Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 16. And we're going to begin reading there at uh, verse 3. You got it, son? And we're going to read from verse 3 to the verse 6. Read. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations, and say, 
Thus saith the Lord God unto Israel, to Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the Lord of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother an Hittite. And as for thy nativity in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor swallowed at all. Non I pitied thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee, but thou was cast out in the open field to the lofting of thy person in the day that thou was born. And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live, yea, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Let the church say amen. <clears throat> when I saw you, I passed by you. And even though you was in your mess, I spoke life to you and I told you to live. Even though you was tore up from the floor, from the guttermost to the uttermost, I said live. And everybody else gave up on you. I never lost hope in you. I kept believing when nobody else would believe in you because I said live. Did not Jesus say, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly when you're looking at somebody else that look like they flawed and thrown down look to the hills because your help is coming i'm talking about jesus he's going to take a situation that's crooked and he's going to straighten it out in every one of our lives can't nobody get up and say i got it all together i doubt that very seriously it's something wrong with everybody but yet there's a doctor called the bomb of gilly yet he didn't come up in the house he says i am the great physician i'm able to heal you in areas where you've been broken and torn down i'm able to build you up when everybody else said that you'll never mount to nothing god says i love you more than what you'll ever know simply because i called you from your mother's womb even when i was coming down through 42 generations i passed by you and when i saw you polluted in your own blood i said live homer homer mu i said live it's obvious when i got something in store for you nobody can take it from you i just want you to know eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that i prepare for them that love me i'm trying to help somebody up in here you've been broken down torn down thrown down but God says I'm going to pick you up from the guttermost and I'm going to take you to my uttermost I want you to recognize and not realize I got a spirit called grace and grace ain't nothing but my unmerited favor I've been waiting on you a long time now now you're coming to your senses you remind me of the prodigal when you got down there in the hog's pen after taking your inheritance and spinning it over here and spinning it over there I came by and called you up and you said when you came to your senses sitting down in the pig's mire in my father's house the hired servants live better than this somebody shout glory to God it's obvious God got something with your name on it and tell your neighbor it's a miracle high five them and say it's a miracle coming my way I ain't gonna let this thing get out of my hands now I come too far to turn back now my God is gonna move some mountains my God is gonna supply all my needs my God is gonna heal my wounds my God is going to raise me up while I was throwing down. Somebody shout glory. Hey Lord, glory to God. I feel my help coming as an older preacher moving past middle age. I feel the spirit of the Lord 
I feel like King David. I feel like running through a troop, leaping over a wall. I'm not going to stay where I'm at. I'm getting ready to move. I ain't going to stay upstairs. I'm going to the Bahamas. I'm going to Africa. I'm going to Dominican Republic. I'm going all over the world. I'm going to preach this gospel to the four corners. I'm going to live and not die. Somebody shout, Lord. Whoa. I feel an abundance of rain. Don't y'all feel these little showers? Y'all should have told me the forecast. Somebody say it was going to snow. But I feel rain. I feel the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow. My God is moving. I see the mountains getting out of my way. Somebody shout, yes, yes, yes. The best is yet to come. Shout, yes, somebody. Shout, hallelujah, somebody. Woo! 